Good morning, good afternoon, Caymans. What we got going on here, Mr. Iker here. We're in the uh, school closure week three folder. If that's going to be the same name, I might change it to a probability folder. Uh, but we're going to be looking at two FRQs. This video will cover 2011 number two about politics and gender. find these FRQs. It's under the school closure chapter 5 through 7 FRQs. Uh, this whole folder is reviewing probability. Probability is usually the uh, popular topic that students want to review. Uh, after you watch these two videos and try these two questions, you'll do this watched probability videos link, uh, and then after that there's some other practice that you'll do. But let's get started. Um, this is in that school closure chapter 5 through 7 FRQ document this is 2011 number two. We have a two-way table here. 500 registered voters. Three different parties. If you haven't had a chance to try this question, I'd recommend pausing the video and seeing what you could do with it. It's pretty quick. The question is, given that a randomly selected voter is male, what is the probability that he is registered for party Y? So uh, this is a conditional probability, given that the voter is male. So we're only looking at this data right here, given that they're male. All this other data we can ignore. So we're only looking at the highlighting there. So given that the person is male, so that's out of 200 people. Given that they're male, what's the probability they registered for party Y? So that would be 48 out of 200. 48 out of 200. Uh, typically on past exams, that's sufficient. You could just stop there and move on. If you'd like to call that uh, 0.24, you could call it like that. Uh, I would recommend, though, don't just do this. Don't just write that. That would probably get you a partial, if not an incomplete, because we need to know where that number comes from. There might be alternate ways that you could get 0.24, alternate wrong ways. So you definitely want to show the fraction that led to 0.24. Uh, but that's part A. Um, just for notation's sake, this notation would be the probability that the person is party Y given that the person is a male. Uh, sometimes students will try to write this and the first thing they see, they think that's the first thing that goes in the notation. But the condition, the given that part, is uh, after this vertical line. So this is the probability party Y given the person is a male. So that's the correct notation. Uh, if you want even more uh, notation because you like notational things, um, this formula is on the formula sheet. You can cal calculate this by doing the probability Y and, so that's intersection is and, and M all divided by the probability of m male. So uh, this would look like this, y and m, let me get rid of this a little bit, y and m, y and m is this, 48 out of 500, 48 out of 500, and probability of male is 200 out of 500, so 200 out of 500, and since we're dividing by the same amount, um, these two 500s are going to divide out, basically. So you're left with 48 out of 200. I would warn you about doing stuff like this and writing the notation. If you write the notation wrong, then you would lose points. So, for instance, let's say if you, uh, instead of doing that symbol, and maybe you did this one by mistake, that would get you uh, a partial because the probability of Y or male is not 48 out of 500. Uh, but that's part A. So if you get part A right, you had 48 out of 200, that would get you uh, one full point on a probability question. Well done. Bravo. Uh, let's check out question B. Among the registered voters, are the events is male and registered for Y independent? Justify your answer based on probabilities calculated from the table above. Now, it might be tempting to try to do a chi-squared test for independence, because you see that independence, uh, but they're very clear the expectation is you're only supposed to use numbers from the table above. So there are multiple ways of determining independence uh, when you're given the counts in a table. 
the different formulas you could use is probability of uh, A given B. If that equals the probability of A, then they're independent. So basically this is saying uh, if we know event B happens, and if it doesn't change the probability, it's still probability of A, even if event B happens, then those are independent events. The effect of B, this B occurring, has no effect on just straight up, it's still the same probability of A. So knowing B that happens doesn't increase or decrease the likelihood of event A happening. So that's one approach you can take. Uh, another approach you could take is you could say the probability of A given B, uh, if they're independent, that should be the same as the probability of A given not B, the complement of B. Um, so that's basically saying, um, maybe if we put it in th these terms, the probability that someone is party Y given that they're male, that's what we calculated in A, if that's the same as the probability they're party Y given that they're female, if that's the same, then it doesn't particularly matter if these two are equal. It doesn't matter whether we know they're a male or a female. It's still the same likelihood that they're party Y. So that's another approach, uh, another approach that you could take. Uh, one last approach, you have lots of options here. One last approach that you could take is you could calculate what's the probability of A times the probability of B, and uh, if that equals the probability of A and B, that uh, would also show that A and B are independent. So if any of these, if any of these formulas are true, then you would have independent events. So uh, let's check out our table. See if I could do this, keeping my work and scrolling back and forth. All right. So here are two approaches. The first two that I showed you and a couple seconds ago. Uh, the probability of Y given M, I think that's what we had calculated before. That was out of 200 males, so males is in the denominator, that's our condition. 48 out of 200 are party Y. How many are party Y regardless of what gender? Well, that would be party Y is this number, so 168 out of 500. I'm pretty sure those are not equal. Uh, we could calculate, we have uh, 0.24. So among males, 24% are party Y. And among females, or sorry, um, not females, but the overall male and females in the population for Franklin Township, 168 out of 500 are party Y. 0 0.34. So what these numbers are telling us, uh, this value, 34% of the population are party Y, but only 24% of males are party Y. So it's actually less likely to be in party Y if you're male than otherwise. So uh, since these are not equal, we would say these events are not independent of each other. Being a male lessens your chance of being uh, in party Y. To look at this other one, um, probability y given m is 48 out of 200. Uh, if they're independent, then the probability that someone is female, given that they're female now, and that they're in uh, party y, so 120 out of 300, um, these should be equal if they're independent events. Uh, earlier we saw that this is 24%. And uh, 12, or 120 out of 300 is 40 percent. So if you're a female, there's a 40 percent chance that you're in party Y. But if you're a male, you're less likely. So since these are not equal, we would say they're not independent events. Uh, so if you were able to uh, get that. You said that they're, um, let's see, you said that they're not independent. You had a numerical justification for your work, like that part right there. Um, then you would score an E. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's different ways of scoring partials that I wasn't going to get into. But let's finally look at 
Um, and by the way, we were answering not this question, but we were answering B below. But let's look at the last part, question C. So we're given a segmented bar graph um, to display this data. This first one is Franklin Township, uh, and it shows the gender and party registration. So you could see, uh, for instance, party X, males are more likely to be in party X than females. Uh, party Y, that's what we just calculated. Females are more likely to be in party Y than males are. Uh, and then the question is kind of a cool, interesting idea. Uh, they gave you the segmented bar um, bars to complete. And it says in Lawrence Township, the proportions of all registered voters for uh, WXY are the same for Franklin Township. Uh, the party registration is independent of gender. So those two statements are incredibly important, but easy to miss. So first, the proportions of registered voters in party WXY are the same as Franklin Township. So we're going to have to go back to that part A table to be able to complete this. And also very important is that party registration is independent of gender. So whatever this first bar graph looks like, the second bar graph should look exactly the same. Uh, a common misconception that students have is they think, well, there are three parties, so I'll just go like this and cut it into thirds. That's roughly thirds. Um, that's a correct idea that they should look the same, like this one should look the same as that. But that is not actually addressing this comment that the proportions of registered voters are the same between the two townships. So there's not 33% that are W. There's not 33% that are Y, and there's not 33% that are Z in either township. So let's go back to that first table and check out what percent come from each one. So in this table, uh, what percent are in party W? Well, party W isn't that popular of a party. We have 88 out of 500. So 88 out of 500 is 18% is party W. 244 out of 500 is 49 percent. And then 168 out of 500 is 34 percent. Or proportion of 0.34. So those are the values, not 33 percent each, but 18, 49, and 34. So when we when we uh, make this, we need 18 percent 18% are party W, so that's about 18, so this is W, and you definitely would want to label uh, which one's which. And then, um, what was it, 49%, so we're going to put that not at 49, but it's cumulative, so 18 plus 49 is 67, so we put it at the 67 mark, so that's Y. And then the complement, the leftover, is party Z. So that would be the correct answer. That's what you would have to do to get an E uh, on this question. Make sure you have the labels, W, Y, and Z. And make sure that these are the same. They're the same because it's independent of gender. The proportion that are Y among females is the same exact proportion that are Y among males. So make sure those are the same. And then you have to have the, uh, this is... Uh, how do I want to write that? This would be, um, this is the 18% that I calculated from the table. This is the 49% that we calculated from the table. And then this is the 34% that we calculated from the table. Um, so really interesting way um, to assess a graphical understanding of independence. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I like that question, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make a video about it. So I hope this video is helpful as you continue to review for the AP exam.